What's up? Happy Monday. This is Actors Daily Bread, episode 144. And this is Q&A Monday. So stay tuned. This is where I take, uh, I answer questions that were asked um, in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. Shout out to all those members there. If this is your first time watching Actors Daily Bread, I want to welcome you. My name is Christine Horn, professional working actress of 20 plus years and a life and career coach for actors just like you. And uh, to all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up? Replay watchers? Love you guys. So, yeah, it's Monday, and there are a few questions here. So as you pop on, be sure to say hello. Um, so yeah, I'm just, you know, for those of you who don't know me, don't know me well, I don't like doing all that typing. Like, so I just, it's easier for me to just pop on and um, ask these questions. Let me just make sure that this is in the Hollywood Bound Actors Group. As you pop on, be sure to say hello. And I'm gonna to go to this page to read some of the questions that came through. You know, the beauty of um, Q and A's are, uh, you know, someone has the same question you have, more than likely. So um, we have a great uh, video library of these kind of things. So if you are trying to catch up, you can go to my YouTube page, you can click my name and catch up on 143 other episodes. So let me see. Um, let me go look at the question and I'll read them and then I'll answer them. Um, um, someone's emailing me. <laughs> Tony's emailing me. So let me get to the first question. Okay. It says, this is from Samantha Miller. What's up, Samantha Miller? Whenever you watch this, she says, hi, Christine, I have a question. What are some recommended classes to take or theater companies for the classically trained actor. I'm moving to LA in a few weeks and I've heard of Anitas, but I'm looking for more options if there are any, thanks in advance. Hey, Samantha, thank you for the question. Um, to be honest, that's not my zone of genius. I would truly say you may want to just, I hate not to sound funny, like for real, just Google it because that's not my zone of genius. So I would Google, um, you know, classic, classical theater companies in in Los Angeles. And just, I would maybe go to Yelp, read the Yelp reviews, and then maybe if you find some, maybe ask around some other actors that you know in LA um, or even on Facebook to see what some of their experiences have been. All right, um, let me just make sure, hang tight with me guys. I really like to make sure this is sharing in the Facebook group and it doesn't always. So give me one second and I'm gonna to get to Ashley Ferguson's question next. So as you pop on, as I do this, just um, give me one second. As you pop on, if you have a question, you can ask, but I'm going down the list really quick of, okay, it's working, awesome. You know, technology it's not always doesn't always cooperate. <laughs> so I'm going to get to Ashley's question. Uh, Ashley Ferguson, what's up, Ashley? She says, hi, Christine. I was wondering if you would recommend getting started in Atlanta and booking co-stars there first before heading to L.A. I'm trying to decide my post-graduation relocation from the mid-Atlantic region. I do already have a few contacts or a few connects in L.A. Ashley, that's a great question. And Gwen, I'm going to get to your question next. La Prima. Hey, thanks for joining. Hey, Kathleen, thanks for joining. So, you know, uh, who's this again? Ashley. Ashley, that's a really great question. And that's actually something I've shared. If you've heard any of my story, um, that's something I did. You know, sometimes people move to LA before they're ready. Um, and I remember being a newer actor, or not even a new actor, new to film and television, and not understanding what that meant when someone said, you're not ready for LA. You know, it used to feel like they were like attacking me personally. Like, what you mean? I'm good enough, right? But I, in hindsight, you know, when I left The Lion King and I moved to Los Angeles circa, I think, 2004, 10 ish I think my resume wasn't ready and I had to I booked web series and I did independent films and student films and just did the more theater but I actually that was what I did actually I I had to do a whole lot of soul searching and personal development for stuff I was going through for myself um, but um, 
what it really meant was my it's like a catch-22 it's like no one wants to see you out here if you have if you don't have tv credits like tv credits rule this town period and anything you do can help but it takes you getting that one line that you know that one line or that you know under five role or that you know small 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 co-star something to give you that credit and so yeah if you already have some connections if you have some connections in Atlanta, that's good. And I want to say this. It is a plan to go to Atlanta because it's a smaller market compared to L.A. But I don't want you or anyone else who's watching this later to think that Atlanta is a lesser market um, as, as far as competition for and between L.A. and New York. Because let me tell you, Atlanta is getting more and more fierce. There's some amazing talent in Atlanta. I mean, hell, I came from Atlanta, right? Um, so just know that too. It just because you're going to, you you may decide to choose a smaller market. It doesn't mean it's going to be just oh no big deal. I'm here. They'll book me because there are a ton of LA actors who moved from LA to Atlanta to actually start working. With that being said, yes, I think that is a good plan. If you're coming out of school, if you don't have any, and if you don't have any um, credits, really, yeah, I would say start in a smaller market because. As one of my clients used to say, shout out to Lanisa Frederick, she said, wow, Christine, she moved here from Chicago. And she said, Los Angeles is the Olympics of acting. It's the Olympics of acting, the Olympics of marketing, you know, so it's not for the faint of heart. It is not. Um... Gwen, you can't hear me. Can anyone else hear me? Am I talking to myself? Can someone post in the comments that if you can hear me? Oh, maybe it was just Gwen's connection. Okay. <laughs> it stuff happens. So, so to answer your question, Ashley, uh, and Sheena Foss says, I'm so glad you talked with me about this. Oh, awesome. Yes. Um, so Ashley, you know, and, and support is a is an interesting thing too. Do you have a support system in Atlanta as well? Because whether you go to Atlanta or New, or LA or New York, um, thank you, Sheena. Um, having a support system helps too, because it is just a jolt of change, and you're away from family and friends. And you know, any if you have more support, more of a support system in Los Angeles, like family or friends, people you could stay with if things got tight financially. If you have that support, then maybe LA is the move. But it is it is hard to get that jump start because it is a much bigger market. There are tons of people who are doing what you're doing. And in Atlanta, the competition is fierce as well. Um, but I will say this, and I, and I think when you know when casting directors and when people are saying when they're thinking about their local talent, and I speak to this because I've been I have been there. I used to be really annoyed when people would think, oh, only actors in L.A. or New York are good. And I remember talking to some casting directors and they explained a bit more, saying it wasn't that they're, that New York and L.A. actors are just better actors, period. And it's more that there, there's a level of commitment that a lot more actors have in some of the bigger markets like New York and L.A. Because a lot of times people have left their friends and family. This is they're going full out hardcore for the dream, even if they're waiting tables at night or have a day job, like there's a different level of hustle because you see every two seconds something filming around you or people working and you're not. And so it's a slight difference for, and I can speak for myself when I lived in Atlanta because there was a comfort there. And so maybe you don't stay in class as much and you get wrapped up in your everyday work going to work and hanging out with your friends and the rent's cheap and well it was <laughs> you know so sometimes that comfort can make you slack a little bit in your hustle and staying connected and doing your marketing and getting those up opportunities but either either way is good but if your resume is fresh and you have an if you have an option i would say keep focusing on the craft you know if you can go to atlanta do it they have some awesome acting schools acting workshops and some great agents there but just know that um you're going to atlanta doesn't make it easier but it is a good place to start so i hope that answers your question awesome so i'm going to go to gwen's question um 
Tony, let me know if you want me to answer this question on live. Um, just because I, I can't keep going back to my messenger, but let me know. Put in the comments here in the thread if you want me to answer your question on live. Uh, this question is for Gwen. And if you're just tuning in, this is Actors Daily Bread, where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life you love. Hey, so I'm answering, I'm answering some questions. On the fourth Monday of every month, I do an open q and I do office hours in the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. So if you are watching this and you're not a member of the Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group, type it in the search bar, join us. That way you can see these Q&As that when they pop up. So Gwen Johnson, hey Gwen. Gwen says, hi Christine, I have a question. What is a character actor? How is it different than a regular actor? And by regular actor, I mean those that are considered personality actors. I hope I'm making sense. You're making tons of sense, Gwen, and thank you for your question. Um, basically, uh, a character actor is basically, I, actors are kind of broken into, at the core, broken into two, two parts, two types. You have your ingenue, which are your, your leading man, leading, we use it really for women. It basically means like young, pretty leading lady, right? And then, so you have, it's like you're either, who's an ingenue right now that I can, why am I drawing a blank on names? Like Kerry Washington would be considered an ingenue, even though she's um, getting older. Typically, they ho they hold that for younger actresses, and you know. But then Viola Davis would be a character actor. All it means, Gwen, really is just in a nutshell, is just like you're not the. We're not automatically thinking of you as the pretty young leading lady, the hot leading lady. Now, of course, anybody can be a leading lady, just like. Viola Davis and Meryl Streep are leading ladies, right? But because it's like this thing of you're not expect, we're not only working with you. We, we don't only desire you. We don't only enjoy your you on camera because you're pretty. You're bringing more to the table. There's more below that. There's more layers there. And so same thing for the men, my men who would be my sexy buff leading men and then character actors. So character actors, just everybody else. <laughs> So you don't have to get caught up in those labels because that's just what we all are. And there's so, for me personally, I have so much fun playing, you know, do, doing juicy character driven roles, not just, oh, she's cute, looks good on camera. I hope that answers your question. Um, so awesome. I got all the questions from the Hollywood Bound group. Tony, um, I don't see your reply. I see the heart. Do you want me to answer your question live? Let me know because I'm not going to stay on too long today. Those are only questions I had in there. Oh, you know, while you answer me, I'm going to get to man. What's his name? Mandy, Manny Miranda. What's up, Manny? If you, when you watch this, he asked, um, Hey, Christine question. I want to recreate a scene from Pulp Fiction that includes Samuel Jackson. It's the scene where he quotes the Bible. Obviously, that scene has some dialogue from the actor who he eventually shoots. What's your take on it? Um, Manny, um, let me see if I can tag you on this. Nope, I must have to do it after it's over. Manny, my, my, my response to this, oh, okay, I see your question, Tony, thank you. My response to this, Manny, is, you know, I'm always a, a, a proponent of of creating and filming yourself and having fun and taping yourself. Um, my thoughts on recreating something from that already exists, a popular film, is what are you using it for? If you're just doing it because you just want to have fun and practice, by all means, do it. Do it. Have fun. However, I don't want you to be confused and think that what you create should be used for you professionally. It, like It shouldn't be used. You shouldn't be like, oh, I have a demo reel now because it's you took a very a popular scene from a movie from clearly it's a recognizable scene from someone we all know who's famous and the 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 trick there the trap is that when people are watching you do it it's they're only thinking about the original person who did it so if you're just doing it for fun and want to share it on social media and just you know make sure you say that you don't own the copyrights but if you just want to have fun I say do it we should just create there doesn't have to be any nothing deep about it, but just know you won't be using that 
to submit to an agent or to put on your actor's access to get potential gigs because it's very much a caricature of a of a thing that already exists so i hope that makes sense um but i never like to say don't create i say create i say do it i say have fun you know and see you know who you can get to do it with you and just have a good time and just know that that's what you're using it for okay all right so what's up crystal lee brown in the house um Okay, Tony, I'm going to get to your question, and then I'll probably wrap. I'm not going to be on too, too long today. Um, and before I take this last question, I just do want to remind um, you, especially since Crystal just popped on, you just reminded me. Um, I do have the link below. If you are in search of attracting your new management, your new agent, and you need some help, you want my guidance, I am teaching an exclusive workshop called the Act agent attraction method it's going to be held on saturday november 3rd and saturday november 10th from 12 to 2 p.m eastern this is fine if you cannot make it live i highly suggest you still register because you'll get the replay 24 hours after and it's not going to be like an interactive um thing i'll do a short q a at the end of each session certainly but i have so much to teach that i'm going to be in mostly lecture mode so if you can't make it live don't worry, you're still going to get lots of great things to do, lots of homework and things to just follow. And uh, I'm really excited about teaching this because it is that time of year. We are almost at the end of October. And if you're going to do it, this is the time to do it if you want to get rep before pilot season hits. You know, never any guarantees in that timing, but this is the time to do it. I think a big people, a lot of people make the mistake of searching at the wrong time. And then they don't get as many meetings as they would hope because it's just the wrong time and agents are busy. So that link is below, agent attraction method. So I will be promoting that for a while. And if you're on my mailing list or in my Hollywood Bound Facebook group, I sent you a very special VIP code to register. So be, check your emails or just come on to the group to find that. So I'm going to take this last question before I go. And yes, so Tony says, when financially strained, how do you manage being an actor and get financially stable? Or do you just take a break? For, ooh, Tony, this is a juicy question. This is juicy. Hold on, let me have a sip of water. This is a really good question, Tony. And I can relate. So I, I'd want to speak on it. So. Let me just come back over here to the group, make sure we're good. Okay, awesome. I'm, I'm hopping in between the Hollywood Bound group. So let me read Tony's question again. And Tony, thank you in advance for being transparent and allowing me to um, comment. So I'm going to read the question again. Tony says, when financially strained, how do you manage being an actor and get financially stable? Or do you just take a break from acting for a while until, you're financial, until you are financially stable? Now, uh, Tony, I've been on both ends of this um, at different points of my life. You know, I've been acting for a long, long time, and I'm the girl who always would have two and three jobs. That's the Jamaican in me, I guess. You know, it's really hard to be creative and go with the flow, Tony, when you're stressed about keeping the lights on. And what I want to say is, you know, well, it's two things because, okay, sorry, the hamsters are going, you guys. If you already, I'm going to approach it from a couple of angles, okay? If you already have an agent who's sending you out and you're taping and it's not a big deal, you go into your job and then you tape auditions and then if you book it, you book it. If you don't, you don't. That's one thing. So my question kind of is, if, you're, if the finances are not stable, wouldn't it help? If an acting gig came through to, you know, you know, if even if you got paid scale, like that's that could cover a bill. So my question, I almost have a follow up question. And, and where is and not to get deep into your personal finances, but where is the pull on the acting? Because acting doesn't have to cost you money um, to pursue it. So you, if you have an agent and they can send you out, that doesn't cost you money. So my question is, where is the financial strain outside of your personal, just you need to keep the lights on, you got kids and you got other things going on personally. Where is the strain coming onto your acting that I'm more, I'm 
thinking you may be referring to maybe taking classes or getting new headshots. Um, and then another question might be, um, okay, you don't have an agent. And another thing might be, because um, that's really where we're spending our money, classes, photos. And if you're not in an area that allows, like let's say you're in a smaller town and you have to drive three hours to get to the nearest, you know, like for some of my clients who are in the Carolinas and they have to drive to Atlanta, they have to factor in gas money and then missing work and that kind of time. So those are the kind of the two things, you know, you see what I mean? So here's the thing, acting is not going anywhere. There's that fear a lot of us have of, oh, I'm getting older and if I don't do it now, it's never gonna happen. But I also know as a creative person, if we are worried about the lights, worry about how we're gonna eat, that causes an anxiety and a stress, certainly, but it also causes a, a desperation. And so, and not saying this is you, Tony, but for, for those of you who especially go into auditions in person a lot, you bring all that energy into the room with you. And so sometimes, you know, one of my girlfriends took a break for a year because she ended up getting like a good job. I'm using air quotes on that. But it was like a long-term contract and she just took it. She's like, Christine, I need to take this because I need to get some money in the bank. I'm about to get married. And I just, and the stress of acting is just like, I can't deal with it right now. And I just want to, you know, for her, she's like, I just want to be a regular person and get a check. And that worked for her for for a, a minute and she hasn't gotten back to it yet. If something comes her way, she deals with it. So I will say, you know, because we're adults, you know, having that is, is key. But I wanna just offer something for you to consider is that the right gig could come at any moment. And so if you stop the pursuit, the pursuit doesn't have to cost you that much money. If you start learning, you don't have an agent. It, the pursuit of an agent doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. You know, some of the tactics I teach in the book, in my Booking Magnet Academy, you know, is the cost of a stamp or printing some paper that might cost you, you know, you know, 20 bucks a month to get your supplies and mail things off. So I don't think you have to stop the pursuit. Also, as long as you have internet, you can go to the library for free. You can be watching classes. You can watch anything on the SAG Foundation website. They have hundreds of videos with casting directors and, and people sharing their stories and techniques. There's books you can get for free at the library. You have a cell phone where you can tape yourself. You can get your, in your if you have your Actors Access account, you can get some uh, download sides and practice. But if you don't even have an agent right now, that should be a priority so that it could help with the potential of getting a gig. Because it takes one gig, one instant, your life can change in an instant. You guys, I never forgot, this was 20, I wanna say 2014. I was working at my day job, Tony, and stick with me. Working at, for 15 years, I worked at a nonprofit organization in Atlanta where I helped people with disabilities find jobs. I did that for years. I started as a receptionist in 1999, and then I left and came back, left and came back, and I ended up working my way up. They loved me there. I did a great job. I was passionate about the work. I'm very passionate about working with people with disabilities, sidebar about me. And they worked with me. They knew I was an artist, so they would let me have a day off, or they would let me make things up, right? And I was so grateful for that job because that job, like I talked about this in, in, my, in my event in Atlanta, I treated that job like a business loan I never had to pay back. I didn't go there with the energy of, oh, I hate this job. Oh, God, it's keeping me from this. Like, I would just be like, okay, this money's coming in. It's going to go to this, this, and this. And I had two jobs back, back in the day, and plus my businesses. But I never forget, I was at my day job, and it happened twice, Tony. In two, first, I'm going to go back to 2006. I was working at that same job at the, at the front desk, and I got a call from the Lion King. And I had auditioned for The Lion King three years prior and never heard a thing. Three years. Three years later, they called me out the blue and said, can you come to New York for a callback? I had to scrape up money from friends, family. You know, there was a couple of coworkers who believed in me, put $10 in, went to New York, didn't book it. A month later, they called me again, 30 days later, no, after not hearing anything, and said, can you be here in a week? My life changed at that moment, Tony. I toured with that show for five years. Fast forward, ended up back at that job later just because, you know, stuff happens. Y'all have heard my story. And 
I got called from my manager here in LA at the time. And they said, can you come for this audition for this new ABC series? And I was like, oh, I'll tape because I don't want to have to go through the trouble. It's going to cost me $1,000, Tony, to get to LA. They called me the day before, which meant it would be a last minute ticket. That was about $600. And I'd have to rent a car. That was another $300. And I'm like, I'm about to be out $1,000 easily for a hope, for a wish. I got this day job. I can't miss days of work. I'm going to miss that money. But I scraped it up. I called family. I called friends, people who believed in me. And Tony, when I tell you I got on that plane, I was in that room with celebrities, people you know, people I know, people who I've seen on TV for years. I had that audition at 11 a.m. By 1 p.m., my manager had told me I got a test. They flew me back out to L.A. I ended up booking that series. So you just never know. And yes, the series didn't get picked up, but I got to shoot for two weeks in L.A. Fly first class was a series regular for the first time in my life. And they like people are like, who the hell is this chick? She just walks up in here from Atlanta. They didn't even know I was in Atlanta. So I never forgot that, Tony. And I, for all of you who have day jobs, hashtag actors with day jobs and night jobs, and you're feeling the stress of finances, it doesn't have to stop you pursuing acting. If you were to say, I'm tired of acting, this is wearing on my brain, I don't enjoy it anymore, it's not fun, then I would say maybe take a break. But keep, keep if you need to get two more jobs, get two more jobs. But let that, make sure you're always feeding that acting, <laughs> I wanted to call it monster, because sometimes it just pulls on you, right? Like a, like a little alien, like it just keeps drawing you back in. So I hope you receive that. I just know your life can change in an instant. So don't let finances stop you from doing what you can. You can do this for free. Like I, I, don't, I don't receive that as the only excuse for you wanting to step back. So how can you pursue your acting career? To recap before we go tonight, you can pursue it by getting online. SAG Foundation website has tons of videos. I mean, tons filled with casting directors, conversations with cast. This is when you study, you study people's methods. You have Netflix or Hulu or mo you can find watch movies on YouTube, study people. Maybe for the month of October, you study Meryl Streep or you study Denzel Washington or you study Alfre Woodard and like become a student and study their method. Oh, I like what she did there. Oh, I'm gonna try that scene. Oh, wow, her pacing. Just become a student. We are all students of other people. We all kind of steal from people here and there. So don't let that stop you. But I do want you, because that it's hard. If you work, you know, if you're stressed about stuff, that will come into your auditions. But no, I say pursue it if you still enjoy it, all right? Oh, on that note, just remember, just remember, you know, we are uh, all planting seeds. And, you know, a lot of people see me, something just got in my eye. A lot of people see me, you know, booking a lot. And yes, I'm a self-proclaimed booking magnet. I speak that into my life every single day. But what do people, it's like, don't forget that I have planted so many seeds, Tony, Gwen, Sheena, Richard, Crystal. Seeds have been planted since, I mean, I can't even tell you when. Working two and three jobs, spending my last dime on an audition, on a callback, on gas money. Y'all, we are in a time where y'all are so privileged to be able to self-tape. Before self-tape was around, I mean, we used to drive eight hours to New Orleans for a two-minute audition and turn right back around and drive eight hours home. Like, this is how far, those are the seeds that I have planted. And so people are now watching my harvest. They're watching me reap. But don't be confused that I have put that time in. I've had these nights. I've had these feelings that you've had, Tony. It is possible. I am a witness. I am a testimony. Whew. I mean, that's how I'm able to sit here boldly, confidently talk to each and every one of you. I have been doing this for a long time. Sacrifice relationships, friends, time, family. Worked two jobs, go home, tape auditions, come, you know, I mean, just, it is not for the faint of heart, but if you love it, if you love it, just hold steadfast to the vision that you see for yourself and work 
The vision alone is not enough. You got to work too. And those two will marry and stay focused on that. All right. On that note, I'm going to say good night. Remember, if you are in search of your new dream team, your new agent, click the link above or below. And uh, I will see you guys next time. I'm going to take it down, maybe do a little work. I'm going to walk the dog. Me and Prince are going to have a walk. Have an amazing night. See you next time. Bye.